Um, so we are gonna talk about app design and specifically app design within Photoshop. Um, I don't know if anybody grabbed any handouts. I'm also gonna make those available. Okay, there will be some handouts floating around. Um, I will also upload the PDF to the Facebook group so you can just see that and save trees or whatever. Um, there are plenty of apps that allow you to design apps. Um, one of which is an app called Sketch, which is excellent and it's made from the ground up for designing user interfaces for like software. Um, this is going to be how to use Photoshop for those same purposes, which you probably all have Photoshop, I'm sure, and already know a little bit how to use it. Um, the way that you use Photoshop for app design is actually considerably different than how you would use it for like doing sketch renders and normal things that Photoshop was made for. Um, so even if you know Photoshop pretty well, I think you'll probably be able to get a lot out of this um, in terms of just like new techniques of doing stuff. And the, the stuff that you'll learn in doing this, you can take it to your portfolio and using Illustrator and InDesign and you know just kind of the, those sorts of things. Um, so I whipped up the screen um, in a little bit and this is where I'm just gonna go through top to bottom, just kind of recreate this. And then in doing like a lot of these things, um, hopefully you'll be able to take away some, some concepts and like different ways that you can, you can do this. Um, industrial design is becoming increasingly more broad, I think. And app design, I mean, if you look at like a lot of senior capstones, they almost all have like a lot of app design aspects into it. And um, it is a completely different beast from like doing other graphic design stuff because there is a lot of very specific dimensions and thought processes that go into it in order for it to look like a proper app, even if it's not ever going to be functional, if you're just gonna put screenshots of this into your portfolio, people who use your phone as often as we do, um, there's like an uncanny valiness of that where you look at something and it just seems slightly off and it's, it's all thrown out of the whack. So I'm not gonna go into like exporting anything so you can then build like a proper fully functional app or any of that. Like this will kind of just be like doing pixel perfect mockups that you can then put into your portfolio. You Photoshop it into like somebody's handle in an iPhone and you know, all that. Um, so cool. Um, so and if anybody has any questions or if you see something that I'm doing, like I'm probably going to just use a lot of keyboard shortcuts and if anything seems unfamiliar, just ask me. Um, because I navigate very quickly, so if I need to slow down, then please tell me. Um, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna design this around the screen resolution of an iPhone 6. Um, whatever device that you own is probably the best thing to design around because it's really useful to be able to take your mock-up and just look at it on your phone. You'll be surprised by when you're designing like the size of that plus button maybe. It might look okay in Photoshop on your computer, but when you look at it on your phone, it will be surprisingly way too big or way too small. And then you should adjust that way. So check as often as you can on your actual device to see like in context what it looks like. And in the handout, and I'll talk about this a little bit at the end, um, I, there's a lot of resources that you can like stream your Photoshop canvas directly to your phone in real time. So normally what I'll do, I'll just have my phone propped up on my computer and every time I make a change, like half a second later, it shows up on my phone and I can just always keep those in sync. Um, I'm not gonna do that now because it's kind of a pain in the ass to set up. Um, so I'm going to make a new Photoshop document and oh, what is the screen resolution of the iPhone 6? Well, if you already know that it's 750 by 3, 1334, great. If not, one of the first things in your resources list is this awesome website of the iOS design guidelines and it just has tons of stuff and like color palettes that they use and best practices and everything comments of people who probably are just complaining about stuff. Um, but one of the first sections here is the resolutions and display specifications. So all the way back to like the first, second, and third generation iPhone and iPad, all the way up to the most recent iPhone 6 Plus, it'll give you the pixel resolution of what the screen is. Um, so since we're doing iPhone 6, 750 by 1334, um, so I'm just going to make my Photoshop canvas that. Um, resolution, I normally just keep it 72 DPI. I mean, it's on the screen, that's pretty standard. I don't really think it matters. Um, great, so we have a blank canvas. And I'm just gonna put this side by side here. 
um, just so we can kind of cross check as we're going through stuff. Um, first things first, what I would normally do is just put a background layer on here. Um, one of thing that you might do is grab the paint bucket tool and that's not it and just fill it in. Um, one thing I would recommend is in your layers palette at the bottom, there's this little icon that, come on, there it is. There's my dock. Um, all right, well, there's a tiny little <laughs> layers icon down here. Um, I don't know what the icon is called, but there is an option at the top here called solid color. So if you tap on that, or click rather, um, you can fill this in with like a solid color of something. And that just makes a, a fill layer. So no matter what size I might want to change my canvas to, if I want to make this like 2,000 pixels wide, that fill layer is always going to take up the area. So if you ever need to change your canvas size, you can do it that way. Whereas alternatively, if I fill in that and then I make it wider, it's just going to keep the same dimensions as it was before. So just a nice little trick, I guess. Um, OK, so I'm just going to do a fill layer, and I'm going to make a white. Great. Um, and I'm also going to save my work right now. Um, all right, so first things first, um, probably just want to start with the nav bar at the top. Um, that's the realist. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this re <laughs> good start. Um, this resource by Tihin and Lax, um, also on your resources list. Excellent. Every time Apple releases a new version of iOS, they within the day magically just have this fully editable Photoshop document of like just UI components. Um, so. In the good sense of not reinventing the wheel, um, I am just going to open this up. It's a pretty massive, it's like, yeah, over 100 megs. It's a pretty big PSD. Um, just drag this out here. And this is all full resolution stuff, so if you need like a keyboard in your design, you just drag the keyboard over. Um, if you need, you know, what control center looks like, you can drag that over. Um, but what I want first is mostly just the status bar so I'm just going to zoom into something over here um, and just grab this um, shortcut. If you command click, it's going to take you in your layers palette right to what the thing you command clicked on. So like you see my layers palette, I command click on that background and it takes me to that rectangle there. So I'm just going to grab both of those, the status bar and the menu bar and just drag them over. Um, Next, I put those both into a group. Um, Command G, you select two things in your, um, in your uh, layers palette here. Command G puts them into a group. Command A selects everything on the canvas. And then once that group is selected and the canvas is selected, um, you can then move up here. And then these are all of your like alignment tools. So I'm going to make sure that's aligned in the center, which it wasn't. It was slightly off. And I'm going to align it to the top edge. Boop, and there it is. Um, so you're gonna, if you do this a lot, you're going to get used to just moving stuff around because pixel perfect accuracy, especially when you're going to take this and deliver it to a developer to build it, is like so crucial, especially since developers are just going to ravage your design and it's, it's going to be just awful. Um, give them the best chance that they have to actually make it look good. And then when they don't, then you can just bitch at them. Um, so looking back at my original design, obviously it's blue. There's like the color, um, the status bar is white. In iOS, you have two op three options, no status bar, a white status bar, and a black status bar um, in terms of like what color that is. Um, they don't give you a lot of flexibility there um, in typical Apple fashion. So I am also, this doesn't have like, I got rid of the bottom border there. So I'm just going to go into here and find where that rectangle is. You can see I'm switching on and off. There it is. I'm just going to click that. Um, I hate all of this stuff up here, so I'm just going to delete those layers because I just don't like seeing extra stuff. Um, I'm going to get rid of the 22% and the uh, Bluetooth battery, just deleting those things. And 
that's much better. Um, it's just a pet peeve of mine when there's a screenshot of just tons of stuff at the top. Really, if you're showing that to like a client or something, all that's doing is distracting them from your design and their eyes keep moving up there like, oh, I didn't know that your battery percentage is so low. Well, let's just make it bigger so they can stop complaining about that. Great. Um, <laughs> now it's down to like 84% and they're like, that's a comfortable range. Um, and they're like, well, the time's so close to 420. Okay, we'll make a 941. Um, <laughs> um, so the next thing I'm going to do is change the color of the uh, this background behind here. And this is actually just a rectangular shape, which you can grab from the toolbar over here. Um, I'm going to just select a different color so you can see it. It's fine. And then, okay, it didn't make it that color, but that's fine. Um, if you have a rectangular shape in your layers palette, all you have to do is just double click on the thumbnail and then you can change it right there. So you don't have to draw another one. Um, Takeaway tip number one, do as many things as you can in vector. And by vector, I mean things that can scale in like any direction and it doesn't lose like any of its quality. Because if I say took the marquee tool and I filled in this, okay, stop. If I filled in this area um, and I wanted that to be like bigger or smaller, um, actually that kept it pretty well. Anyway, just do that. I'll show you later why you should do that. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to uh, just change the background color of this. Um, one thing to keep in mind too is that if you're going to do like a pretty standard app layout, there is a definitive size for the height and the width of these elements. Um, so the height of this is 128 pixels tall. Um, I didn't have to put that in myself because I dragged it in from that uh, guideline. Um, but if you need to make something on your own, you can just set it to that. Um, to do that, if rather than clicking and dragging to make a rectangle, if you click once, you can then just give it a actual pixel dimension, um, and then you can do the quick align thing, and that's there. Um, so I'm going to sample the color over here. Really great free app that I like to use is called Colors, spelled all weird, um, which is this guy. Um, if you drag off of here and let go, it just samples that color and gives you the hex value for it. Command C to copy, and then double click on the icon, and then it's already selected. It is. Yeah. Um, paste, and then now it's the same color. Yep. Can you explain the hex color? Um, <laughs> so hex is like a format of color coding that is used for like the web. It can also be RGB. Um, so if I like look at this in Photoshop, here is your RGB, 84, 161, 161. Hex color is just like a, a, another way of like formatting that. If you want to get like really nerdy about it, every two letter or character or letter or number, um, like 54 is R, A1 is G, and this one is B. And then just based on the combination of the letters and numbers, you can like simulate what that looks like. Um, so you can see I changed B from one to two. It goes from 161 to 162. So it's just another format of how it looks. Or, yeah. Um, so matching our thing here, I'm going to change the font from Helvetica. Don't use Helvetica in your designs. Like, it's already all over iOS. Just find something better. Like Brandon Grotesque, which is my favorite font. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to change it to Brandon Grotesque, which is one of my favorite fonts. I'll change the color of the font up here in the toolbar. I'll just hit that. When the color picker is up, you can either select it or you can just, you can see like the dropper. I'll just select the background because I know it's white. Um, I will rename it to Iceland Trip. And probably make it a bit bigger. I guess I'll do probably like 40 points or something, maybe 42, maybe 46. I don't know, maybe 44. Um, <laughs> again, when you see this on your phone, 42 versus 46 is like a huge difference. Um, so just keep checking back. Um, also, I'm going to real quick just go through and change the color of everything up here because it's actually really bothering me. Um, make that white. I'll make that white. Change 
push that to white. Go over here. Oh, that's different. Okay, well, we're just going to not have those. And we'll copy and paste that and move it over a few pixels. And also, not only is your battery really good, but you also have great reception right now. Um, so, good for you. Okay, much better. Also, for the purposes of this, I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis into, like, naming my layers, but I am, like, meticulous. If you look at, like, the, the real one that I did earlier, all of my layers are just OCD named. So the tab bar, tab bar, photos, picture icon, take photo, etc. When you have, and I'll show you a... Um, a mock-up I made of uh, Patchmania, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of layers. When you can do that, um, it's so much easier when you can just actually read what they are. Um, and then also there's a very big paragraph at the end of that panned out that explains why you should do that. Um, great. So next thing, um, we can see that there's like a drop shadow here. So I'm just going to use the layer effects drop shadow. So select this in the layers bar, the little FX icon at the bottom. I'm just going to hit drop shadow. Uh, or I can just double click on the actual icon and it brings up the layer style palette. I'm going to do a drop shadow. You can see live preview over there. i um, going to make it 90 degrees vertical, maybe 4 pixels, no blur, and maybe 40%. Sure. Um, one thing that I do want to point out, um, a trick that I learned, is when you're doing drop shadows, Normally, by default, it has like a multiply blending mode on it, so like it kind of like bleeds into the background better. Um, one thing that's really good to do, if your drop shadow is on black or white, it doesn't matter, but if your drop shadow is casting over a color, a really good trick just to like help that pop, and I'm just going to, I have, if you option drag, you can copy the layer. Um, a really good technique is if it, the shadow is casting over a color, is to match the shadow to that color a little bit so it actually just pops a bit more and it doesn't look very muddy. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do that. So we're kind of like on a blue-green background here. Um, so in the drop shadow, I'm going to open the, uh, the color picker and I'm just going to add like maybe 20 points of green and 20 points of blue. Uh, maybe I'll just do blue. And um, 30, 20, 35. Um, so if you can see that, oh, you totally can't. Okay, um, that's awful. Looks much better here. Um, basically, <laughs> this is a lot more black than that is, and it blends. I mean, you can kind of see it, I guess. This blends in a lot better with the actual background than like just the straight up black does. Um, so you can kind of see it over here. You can see like how the shadow there is like clearly a blue shadow over a blue background. If that was black. Um, it would look a lot more muddy. I'll just make a black real quick. You see how muddy? No, you can't. <laughs> okay. Well, take my word for it. Pretty damn muddy. Um, so I'm going to. Okay, thank you. I'm going to make this uh, that bluish. Sorry, you can't see it. And then uh, I guess I'll make it 20. Okay, great. So that's pretty close, I guess. Um, I will, I'm going to move on to this middle part here. Just, I don't know what, how we're doing on time. Um, so I'm going to move on to here, and I'll touch on like the nav bar stuff later. Um, so I hate to say it, but there's a little bit of math involved now. Um, <laughs> iOS 6 versus iOS 7 introduced some new design paradigms. Uh, and these are actually things you really have to take into consideration when you're doing app design, because you have to like, match what Apple is doing for all intents and purposes. Um, in iOS 6, everything was like very skeuomorphic and it looked like real leather. iOS 7, everything's very flat. And if you notice, if you remember looking back at the Photos app, the margin around your photos was much bigger in iOS 6 than it is in iOS 7. There's like two pixels of space between like the border, like the gutter between photos. Um, so like this, for example, is, that's iOS 6. That's iOS 7 style. So knowing that you know we already decided that we want to do three photos across, and we probably want like a six-pixel border around the outside, 
Now, now that we know that the canvas size is 750 pixels wide, and I actually like this is my, when I was doing this, I sketched this out just because. Um, so there's one, two, three, four little spaces of margin between the photos. So six times four. Also, command spacebar to open spotlight. You can do math in spotlight, which is amazing. Six times four is 24. Um, 750 minus 24 is 726 pixels. We have left for each, like, like the total of all the images. I want three images. 726 divided by three is 242. So each one of these pictures is 242 wide. Ta-da. Um, so I am going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it photos. I also like to order my layers, um, how it is top to bottom, left to right in the canvas. I like to do top to bottom in here. So photos comes after group one, which is nav. Um, and I'm going to make a new um, shape. And I'm going to do 242 pixels wide. And they're square dimensions, so two, another 242. And there it is. Now, how do you know where there's six pixels around it? Well, um, I will tell you, you're going to put it right up against the edge there. And you can go 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, That's so scientific. It is. Um, I'm going to turn something on real quick, and then I'll explain that later. OK. Also, a quick way to get the dimensions of something, if you command T to do free transform, if you have your info palette open over here, width and height, 242. If you're like, oh, how big is that? That's how I remember that Like this is 120 pixels wide, because it says it there. Um, so that's six pixels there. I'm going to put this in its own folder called photo. Um, and I'm going to duplicate that, holding down option. And then I'm going to move this over. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you ever like look at me doing stuff, just stuff in Photoshop, normally in my history, there's like 600 nudges events that you can move back on, because I'm just tapping like the arrow keys furiously, moving this around. Um, so I'm going to do if, you know, three of these. Um, and then just sanity check that. If you take the marquee tool, you can see that it's six pixels wide. So good, we did that right. Um, and then I will copy these three and move them down. That's six, great. So I have snapped a pixel, pixel turned on. Um, once they snap to the edge, I'll just like nudge them down. Photoshop does have a sh uh, smart guides, which I just hate. Um, so they do snap that into them. I don't always trust them. Um, what I would much prefer to do is just make the shapes myself, even if you don't see them. Like at first, if I knew that I wanted the space to be six pixels wide, I would just do like a six by six block. Bring my thing over here. And then I just have that guide all the way through. I don't trust their shape lay or their um, smart layer or guides. Um, and it's not nearly as good if you use InDesign. Their smart guides are awesome because when you're nudging things along, they know the space between other elements like it. So they recommend that like, oh, all of your other stuff has like six pixels in between. I'm going to snap you to six pixels. This doesn't do that. Um, and also, if you have a huge Photoshop document like I frequently do, it actually gets very slow because it's trying to snap to everything. And it's, it's just a huge mess. Um, so I have it turned off, but to each their own. Um, great. So now it's time to add some photos. Um, to do that, I am just going to go to this website. This guy took his iPhone 6 Plus to Iceland and took some cool photos as like a review to it. Um, so I'm going to grab some of the thumbnails. This one's pretty nice. I'm just going to drag it into Photoshop here and paste it in. Now, takeaway tip number whatever we're on. Um, when you are adding photos or specifically bitmap stuff into Photoshop for app design, um, and just generally, especially for sketch pages too, this is a good takeaway. 
um, convert that to a smart object, like immediately. To do that, um, go into the layers palette, find the thing you just put in there, which is like a, um, like that photo, it's called layer one, I'm gonna name it picture because layer one is not at all useful. Right click, convert to smart object. And you can see what is a smart object because it has that like little icon there. Um, basically what that does is I'm going to, um, uh, so I'm gonna leave one that's not a smart object and one that is. So in app design, when you're doing like a lot of work in here and even in your sketch pages, it's a lot of discovery. I normally just build stuff and I mean, you know, these pictures, there's two whatever they are, wide and tall. When I was building this originally, I wasn't sure what size I wanted the gutter to be. So I was continually just like resizing until I found a good dimension, which was six pixels. Um, so the sizes of the images also changed in terms of like how I crop them. If you just put a picture in here that's not a smart object, if I make this bigger, say I want this to take up that much space, and they're like, actually, no, I want that to go back down here. Um, it gets really grainy because you make it bigger and then you make it smaller and it doesn't retain that like original um, resolution that it had. You'll even see that if I make this like much smaller, so take note of like the clarity of that. If I make this much smaller, so now I've saved that, that's now the new resolution of that photo. If I make it bigger again, it looks like shit. Um, but if I right click convert to smart object, if I make it tiny and then bigger again, it's the same resolution of the photo. Um, so especially for laying out sketch pages, if you're like just figuring out where everything is, make all of your sketches, like your individual pieces, like a smart object and you can just resize those and it's never going to get any worse than like the full res that you first put them in at. Um, one caveat though, is that like if you're doing a sketch page, say you like you have some uh, like paper that was scanned in around it, since this is not like part of the document technically, if I have my eraser selected, you see that like it's not a raster, so I can't erase it. In order to then edit this photo, I have to double click on its icon. It opens up in this new thing called picture.psb, um, which is a smart object format. You edit it in here, so I'll do like oh neat, and then. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, great. Um, so then it, it, you know, it changes it there. Um, and obviously I don't want that, so I'm going to undo that. Um, so that's, that's kind of a pain. You always have to like be going into the file if you like want to change it. But in terms of just like bitmap images and stuff, super cool. Um, so I want this to be in, why are you there? Fine. Fixed it. Um, so I want this to be over there. I'm going to kind of like size this to however I want. Um, how do I get the picture to be the same dimensions as the um, the block behind there? Um, if you were doing this in the bitmap, not smart object, and I'll just rasterize this to show, um, you could, and I've seen people I've worked with at co-ops who are all amazing ID people but don't know about app design. Um, what they'll do is they'll just make the rectangle and then just like delete that. So now they have, well, you know, better than that, but they have that and then they're resizing and it's not that good. Because then if you ever want the thumbnail to be bigger, then you're screwed. Um, instead, what we do is we do a clipping mask, which you can do a couple of ways. Um, so whatever you want the, whatever shape you want the picture on top to take, put the picture on top of that in the layers palette. So like I want it to be the shape of rectangle too, so picture is above it. Right click and you want to go to create clipping mask, plunk. And then now it's still the full resolution photo here. It's just masked to that dimension. Um, even quicker sor shortcut, um, if you go into here and you hold down option, and be like the line between the two layers. If you hold an option, you see how it changes the icon? Instant clipping mask. So also pretty handy. Um, okay, so rather than doing you know all of these, I'm just going to delete that. You, you guys get the idea. I'm just gonna drag the photo grid over here, center it. If you hold down shift and hit the arrow keys, they go in 10 pixel increments. So if you need to do that, it's faster. 
Um, so maybe rather than doing six down, I can do one down, two up, which is also six. 10 minus two. Um, is eight, and then two more. <laughs> what is math? Yeah. I, I had help with getting the, yeah, exactly. 10 minus is, okay. Um, so we have an instant photo grid, that's awesome. Um, we're super cool. Um, so now I'm gonna move on to the status bar at the bottom. Um, I happened to forget the height of the status bar, so I'm gonna go back to our awesome document here. And a lot of this is cheating. I don't know who said it, but like if you can look it up, then no use in remembering it. Um, totally subscribe to that philosophy. Um, so for example, here we have a whole section about the tab bar in terms of how it should look, what it does. Um, stuff. So if you mouse over this on their website, it shows you it's always 100% of whatever the width of the thing is. Um, and it's 42 points tall. What are points? Um, on iPhone, everything is measured in points. And one point is equal to two pixels. So before there is a retina screen, so the iPhone 3GS and before, um, one point was one pixel. So when a developer was building an app, they would say, I want this to be 49 points tall and it was 49 pixels tall. Um, once the iPhone 4 came along and the retina screen revolutionized everything or whatever, um, one point was equal to two pixels. Same physical dimensions, but twice the amount of pixels in that space, which makes it look so crisp. Um, so if you see something like this that's measured in points, um, it's just multiply that by two and that's gonna give you pixels. So 49 times two is 98. So our tab bar is 98 pixels tall. Um, and as you can see here, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, so I'm gonna make a new thing here. Um, it's gonna be 750 pixels wide because that's the width of our phone. Um, if you, selecting the rectangle tool is U, hit the U key and then it, that selects it. If you hit shift U, you can cycle through, if you watch that, you can cycle through all the shapes that you have to you. If you hit shift U, um, I just want the normal rectangle. And then once you have that selected, if you click once, it just gives you the parameters there. So 750 and it's 98 pixels tall. I'm gonna do my um, select all center bottom thing. Um, I'm gonna put this into a folder called tab bar. And I'm gonna call this BG for background. And um, I'll use my color picker again. I'm gonna go whoop, select that. Now it's the same as that. Also, this design has a one pixel line above it, so I'm just going to make that as well. So hit U, I'm gonna do 750, um, one pixel tall, and I'm just gonna make this like black so we can see it, do that, and nudge it down. Now. The tab bar again is 98 pixels tall. So I want this to actually sit on, so this is, that's where the tab bar stops here. If I had it here, it'd be 99 pixels tall, which is not the proper height. So it's actually gonna be on top. Um, so now if I like do a marquee tool and I size this, you can see with the thing there, it's, it's 98 pixels tall. Um, and then rather than just like choosing a actual color for that. If it's like a grayscale thing, I'll just change the opacity of it um, just to make it really quick. So you can change the opacity of a layer, have it selected, go into opacity and you can change that. Because I'm a little OCD, I hate things when it's like 39%, just make it 40, I don't care though. Um, or you can use zero through nine on your keyboard and it does it in increments of 10%. So you can do like, if you watch the opacity thing here, I'm gonna do like, one is 10%, two, three, all the way up to you know here, 90. Zero is 100. If you do them really quick, if you want like 34%, do three, four really fast and you can change it there. Um, Why would anybody want that? Nobody would want that, exactly. Make a 35 at least. It's one key away, you know? Um, yeah, we're not a bunch of barbarians here at DAP. Make it 35. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna make this, uh, I don't know. Again, even for like colors and stuff, it might look fine in here. Check it on your phone. I'm gonna make it 20, looks fine. Um, so now we have that. Um, another big Sean takeaway are alignment blocks. So I'm gonna put both of these into a background or a layer called background. 
So now I can move these both around at the same time and it makes it easier. Um, so we have three icons here in the tab bar that are equally spaced apart, centered in like their own. Like if you divided that into three sections, they'd be centered in like each of those three sections. Um, measuring that is a huge pain in the butt. Alternatively, what I like to do is make an alignment block and I will explain that now. I will, knowing that 750 is the width of our thing, we want that divided in three sections. 750 divided by three is 250. So I'm going to make something that's um, the height of our nav bar or tab bar and then 250 pixels wide. Did that wrong? 250 pixels wide, 98, okay, great. Um, so now what I can do is I can copy this and I have three rectangles here. Now I can use these to center the icons in. I don't have to like guess as to where that perfect center is. I can just put them there. Um, and since these aren't actually part of the design, what I like to do just for my own sanity, um, I'll do a few things. Um, I make my alignment layers red because I almost never use pure FF quad zero red. By that, I mean that's, that's hex code FF quad zero. Um, I change the layer name to align, all caps, because why not? And then I right click and I change the layer color to like purple or something. So now, that's useful for a few reasons. I'll also make it like maybe, you know, 40% opacity. So if I put stuff behind it, like I can still line it up fine. So now what that does is say I have a bunch of these like align layers. Um, if you have, I don't know if CS5 does this, if you have CS6 and newer, there's this layer like, uh, uh, like bar, I guess, that you can uh, search from. So if you hit this, you can go to name and you can just type like a line. It shows you all of just those layers. So if I just wanted to turn those off, I can just, the other cool thing too, um, is instead of going one, two, three, if you start at the top and just move your mouse down while it's clicked, bleep, you can just, get all of them that you want. So now I can just turn those all on and off when I want to. Um, and then also, I can just turn on and off that search with this little switcher here, so I can go back and forth. I know. Um, so uh, I'm, rather than just changing these again, here, um, I'm just going to make new ones, and you can see the opacity there. Um, Line that to the right. Make sure that they're left to right. So that should be middle. That's right. Great. Um, so now I'm going to do like a, I, this is a photos app, I guess. So like take a new photo in the middle, like your photo library and like just show me my favorites or something, whatever. Um, iconography is like a whole different like thing that you can study. I am not an icon designer by any means. So I download tons of free icon packs um, that you can easily search for yourselves too. And there's, I think there's a resource I put in the thing that kind of shows you where you can find some. Um, so I go in here, I have my graphics icons and miscellaneous folder and my Dropbox icons. And these are just like tons of icon packs I've gotten from over the years. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so these are like, icons that are meant to look like Helvetica, and these are some of these, and you know, whatever. One I really like are the simple line icon sets um, that are all here. Um, so in this one, um, I know that I want a the photos thing, um, which is that one, so I'm gonna open that. That's a Photoshop document. And I'm gonna use my command click to grab this, and I'm just gonna drag it over. And I'm gonna, I don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna close that and also this. Um, and there's my icon. So I'm gonna hide these two. Put those in the group, I'll call it picture or albums, I don't know, whatever. Um, so now that I have that alignment block, I can select both layers. And then with those both layers selected, I can go into these controls at the top and I can say align that to the center vertically and then horizontally, nudge it over. So now that's perfectly aligned in there. Turn off my block, and that's what it is. 
Um, it depends on the licensing. Um, if you go on to the noun project, um, if you're doing something for this, download it, it's fine. If you're using it in a portfolio, like, oh, shit. Now you've done it. Don't take the time. <laughs> <laughs>。You can plug your iPhone in and do a movie recording and it'll stream your iPhone screen to your computer too. Whoa. It's just in QuickTime, yeah. That, that was a new thing with Yosemite. I'll, I'll, in the after show we can, yeah. Um, if, if you use it in your portfolio, my portfolio, I have a page where I use those icons. I like, in like small text at the bottom, I credited the designer because I didn't buy it from like the noun project. Um, these all icon packs, these were made by the designers available for free for anyone for commercial and personal use. Um, so just take note of the licensing that's there and just treat the, you know, uh, designers of the icons well. Um, these I downloaded and these are free, so I'm just using them. Um, so we have this, but it looks pretty big there. It's like the, the space between the top and the bottom is like a, a little uncomfortably close to the top and the bottom of the tab bar for me, so I'm just going to make that smaller. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to do Command T to bring up my free transform. I'm going to grab a corner and do Shift, Click, Drag, and that scales it proportionally this way to like the opposite point of where you grab it. Um, if you do uh, shift option click drag, you can do it from the center point. So since I still wanted to be centered there, I'm just going to do that. Um, or if you want to be really specific about it, when free transform is up, there's like a width height thing at the top. So I'm just going to, what size did I make this? Uh, I made it 56 pixels wide. After much deliberation, trust me, it was 56. Um, when I first Why did this. Because it's odd number. Actually, that's a really good point. Um, in, um, on iPhone, because there's, or on iOS designing, since you can't buy any iPhones that don't have a retina screen anymore, like the 5C is the cheapest, freest iPhone you can get. But the iPad, Apple for some reason is like, oh, we're just gonna keep all of them around. So we hit every price point. Well, there's iPads that still have non-retina screens, which means that if you're designing for retina, and if I make this 55 pixels wide, it's half the size for non-retina screens. 55 divided by two does not divide well. There's a decimal point in there. Probably that ends with 0. 0.5, yeah. Um, so that just like makes everything, it just messes everything up. So stay within like some easily divisible by two number. Um, yeah. What happens if you're designing for Android? <laughs> oh, uh, drink, um, and, then, <laughs> and then sell your computer and don't design for Android. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, honestly though, it, it's, it's, the same, it's the same concept. It's just that Android, there's like, iPhone has like two pixel resolutions. There's like, well actually there's three because the iPhone 6 Plus is three times one point, um, but then they, they downscale it to 1080p, it's whatever. Um, for Android, I've seen normal resolution 0. 0.5, like 0. 0.75 DPI, there's two times, there's two and a half times, there's three times, there's like five or six different times of like scaling uh, multipliers. Um, and then keeping in mind like all of the different array of like screen sizes and stuff, designing for Android to hit every possible device is not an easy task. And I did it half of once and I was not happy about it. Never again. So never again, yeah, again, drink. Um, so, but since we're for iPhone, it's super easy now. I'm gonna make this 56 pixels wide. I'm gonna hit the little link here to make sure that it stays proportional when I scale it. Because if I don't do that and I make it 10 pixels, uh, nothing happens, so we don't want that. Um, no, so you know, it's like that, we don't want that. Hit this, and 56. Um, it's always good to put like the, uh, the PX at the end for pixels, because um, sometimes it doesn't do it. So another big thing here, and I'll start wrapping up soon, um, because basically I'm just gonna do this two more times for the other ones. Um, 
you can see that here, if you look at like this edge, it's a really sharp edge, right up against the top of that pixel boundary. Um, when I scale it to the 56, not so sharp. That's what anti-aliasing is. Um, if it's not directly on that pixel, it kind of makes like transparent pixels around the edge to kind of like blur it. Um, these here are anti-aliased to make sure you have like a nice smooth edge. So when I zoom out, um, it just looks like a rounded corner. Um, but we don't want this. I don't know if you can really tell from, I guess you kind of can. It's like really blurry. If you look at it on the phone, it's a dead giveaway and it just looks like super amateur um, if you don't fix this. So I will show you how. Um, with the um, free transform tool selected, also make sure if you go to Photoshop Preferences General, there is this thing here called Snap Vector Tools and Transforms to Pixel Grid. Make sure that's snapped on. Um, so with this selected, I'm going to free transform. You can see the boundaries around it. I'm just going to move the up arrow a couple times. And then in transforming that, it snaps it to the pixel grid. So before and then after. And then just snaps everything. Now the inside's a bit trickier. Um, it didn't really do any of that <laughs> that I wanted. Um, so I'll do a little bit about the path tools in Photoshop. Um, they're actually pretty robust, not nearly as good as Illustrator. If I'm doing any complex iconography work, I do it in Illustrator, bring it into Photoshop. Um, and if you bring it in as a shape layer, you can still manipulate the crap out of it here. But if it's like a relatively complex shape, Illustrator is all about making shapes and lines. So do it there and then bring it over. They play nicely somewhat. Um, so this inner one here is like still really blurry, which I don't like. Um, so if there's a few different selection tools in Photoshop. There's the move tool, which is V on the keyboard. Um, and that just moves stuff around. Um, but the actual proper selection tools we have over here next to the rectangle, there's the direct selection tool and the path selection tool. So direct selection is the white cursor icon. And if I click once, you can see that I have all of these paths here. Um, I can just, with the direct selection tool, just like grab these paths and like move them around and do wonky stuff with them. Um, the path selection tool will actually select the full path of that. So that's all one path. Um, these are actually separate paths, so I can move these around. Um, so f in the case of this inner one here, what I'll do is I'm just going to take this, and since I have that snap turned on, I'm just going to snap it to the edges And yes, this is very meticulous and takes forever if you have tons of icons. What I would do is like, because now if I ever want to make this a different size, you have to do that again. So bef before you like really tweak all this, make sure that it's like the dimensions that you want and then you can change it. Um, this circle is kind of a mess, so I'm going to select it with the path selection tool and then you can transform within that path and I'm going to do that nudge and you can see it snaps to like a nice thing there. And I'll do the same thing here. Um, this one here is isn't probably as sharp as it could be, so I'm just going to move that in between. Um, that's fine. Okay, so that looks much better. Um, I think the other thing I did on this one over here is that the now the, the thickness of this is a bit thicker than this, and it really weirds me out. So, yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to shift-click to grab these individual points. And you can see that they're selected because they turn the, the fill in. And I'm just going to nudge up one. And then that's a bit better. So another thing to take in consideration for when you're doing path work. It's also a dead giveaway if you get iconography pieces from multiple different sets of packs. So like if I get one icon from here, you can see that like the, like the, the strokes in there are kind of chunky. And I'm like, oh, you know, this one, no, maybe not that one. Um, or if I get from this one, they're like way chunky in this one. So if I put like this, I guess I'll just show you. Um, <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. It, it, just think of that. Um, take that into consideration. 
if you get stuff from multiple packs, try to make them all look cohesively the same because it's also a dead giveaway. Um, the the bar, the minimum bar for design on iOS is like pretty high, especially compared to Android. Um, so people notice that stuff. Like even if they don't directly or like, your mom's not gonna look at the phone and be like, hmm, that stroke is one pixel bigger than the rest of them. You know, delete. Um, that's not gonna happen. But to like some like cerebral gut feeling of theirs, two different places by the way, on your body, um, it, you, you can tell. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you get feelings over here, or like towards your stomach, then you should change it. Um, yeah. Um, cool. So, what I'm going to do, since I um, should wrap up here in the next minute or so, I'm going to put the resources thing on uh, the Facebook group. I will put this PSD of like the the real nice one on the Facebook group so you can open this in Photoshop and look through it and tweak stuff and just move stuff around and see how it works. Um, and then I'll put this recording of which I have three of them now. Um, I'll put all of those together and put it on Vimeo or YouTube or something and also put it on there. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna do a speed run through the resources thing. First one, we already talked about that. Um, iOS GUI Photoshop templates is the, the big thing. Um, app icon templates, if you're designing app icons, this is good to just get the dimensions of everything right. Um, Django, the B is silent, um, does articles on just app design techniques and practices generally and go like super in depth of like the technical aspects of like using Photoshop and stuff. Um, they also have a ton of Photoshop actions that you can just hit run in Photoshop and it just does stuff magically for you. Um, your user interface Bible for Apple stuff, the Apple human user interface guidelines are the HIG. If you're really into this, read that. It's not that long, but like that's the ins and outs of like how Apple thinks it. It's Apple's instructions on designing apps by Apple, basically. Um, Dribble is a resource for finding stuff online um, in terms of like inspiration and graphic design work. Um, but if you search download in the search box, plenty of people put um, free icon sets and like photos of a hand holding an iPhone that you can just drag your mock-up into and it's just like magically there. People put that on Dribble free all the time. So if you just search download, it'll come up. Um, that's my information. Seriously, like tweet at me. Actually, don't do that, just email me. Um, <laughs> software, Sketch I talked about before, super cool. Colors of the photo picker app. Xscope um, is a it does a ton of stuff, but it basically puts like a pixel ruler on your screen. So if you want to get super meticulous, you can like measure things that way. That's also one of the apps that will mirror your Photoshop template to your iPhone so you can see everything in real time. Um, Live View is another one of those things that does the mirroring, but it's free. Not as robust as Xscope though. Composite, just watch their video on their website, but it will turn your Photoshop templates into an interactive prototype right on your phone. So even if you don't touch any part of the coding, using layer comps, you can like actually interact. I did this for a crit over last summer. I like mocked up an app in here, and it, I mean, all of the guys that we were, you know, all of our critics were old, so they didn't get it. But like, I'm scrolling through and they're like, whoa, you made an app? I'm like, sure did. Nope. Um, <laughs> Envision is a prototyping and collaboration tool. Um, if you're at your co-op and they want to do app design work for clients, tell them about this and you're going to get so many brownie points because it's super cool. And Facebook origami is more like intermediate to expert level stuff, but it's just another way of making like very interactive animations and stuff in there. And then this is everything that I've kind of pretty much talked about, nudging with pixel snap, um, the alignment blocks, making your color and your shadows blend better, naming and organizing layers, you can see just do it. Um, and then the OS X system zoom, which I've used a couple times, if you turn that on, um, the zooming in Photoshop is kind of slow a lot of the times and you have to like undo it and like, oh, well now it's back so I have to do this. I have it set so if you hold down control and scroll, it will just scroll in and out um, like that. And it's like super fluid. So if I'm just like, oh, rather than moving this and like zooming in and like nudging it, what I'll do is I'll just zoom into it and then I'll just like nudge it that way. Um, it's, it's faster, whatever. Um, and that's it. Any like burning questions 
in the last minute or so that we have. Yeah. Um, I yeah maybe I, I can put that on there. Um, command tab is how I switch between apps, which is super cool. If you do if you do if you do command tab if you do command tab really quick, it'll switch between your two most recently active apps. If you do command tab, let go of tab, but hold down command, this is all the apps you have running, and you can just cycle through them. Um, command tilde goes back. Um, so command tab until they goes like that. So um, that's really cool. Um, I don't know. Oh, another huge thing in Photoshop real quick. Some of you may already know this. If you command Z in Photoshop, like every app on OS X, command Z undoes, it keeps undoing. In Photoshop, it's like, I'm only gonna undo once if you do command Z. So I'm gonna move this up here in command Z. It doesn't, it just goes between those two states. If you do command option Z, it's going to move like up, if you look at that, <laughs> it'll move up your history and it just keeps going. And then command shift Z is forward in history. Um, I, so long in my life, I, I'm gonna give Karen props because if I don't, she's gonna murder me because she told me about this shortcut. Um, oh, Karen George Hillis. Um, so, cool, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.